The most interesting and powerful stories often come from the most unexpected places. Green Bay, Wisconsin is not the setting most people would think of for one of the most storied franchises in all of sports. It's a sleepy northern city nestled onto the west coast of Lake Michigan that is often plagued by harsh weather. Prior to 1920, it was known as an industrious town with a paper mill, a port on the lake, and perhaps most importantly, a large meat packing industry. One of the largest meat packing companies in the area, the Indian Packing Company, employed a man named Curly Lambeau. Curly Lambeau was a standout athlete in high school and had even gone away to college at Notre Dame, where he played football for the legendary coach, Newt Rockne. But when he had to leave school and come home to Green Bay due to a severe case of tonsillitis, he took a job with the Indian Packing Company. Curly soon got the itch to play football once again, and professional football was finally starting to gain steam as a popular pastime. And so, on August 11th, 1919, Curly asked the Indian Packing Company to fund his football team. They agreed to give him $500 on the condition that they would be the sponsor for the new team. And the Green Bay Packers were born. About two years later, on August 27th, 1921, the Green Bay Packers were granted access to the newly formed American Pro Football League, now known as the National Football League. The Packers are the third oldest organization that still operates and the only one that plays in its original city to this day. Although they would falter in their first few years, by 1929, they were a well-oiled machine that won 29 straight home games and three straight championships from 1929 to 1931. The Packers also registered the NFL's first undefeated season in 1929 with a 12-0-1 record in which their sterling defense registered eight shutouts. Curly Lambeau would both coach and play for the Packers during this time and was joined by a cast of other stars. The Packers would continue their winning ways through the 30s and 40s with a team of some of football's first superstars. This would also be a formative time for one of the NFL's greatest rivalries as the Packers and the Chicago Bears, held by University of Illinois graduate George Hollis, dominated the league. However, the Green Bay Packers' dominance would not last forever. Their star players retired and Curly Lambeau left the team in 1949 as their performance slipped. This would signal the first bit of real adversity for the Packers. In 1950, after the departure of Lambeau, new coaches tried and failed to return the Green Bay Packers to their former glory. The Packers would endure little success and posted losing records season after season. One positive event during this time was the opening of the New City Stadium in 1957, now more commonly known as Lambeau Field. Today, it reigns as one of the most iconic facilities in sports. However, even this event could not spur the Packers to a successful season. In 1958, the Packers posted their worst record in team history with only a single win. After this pitful showing, the Packers hired a new head coach, a former assistant coach for the New York Giants named Vince Lombardi. At one of his first practices, Lombardi gathered his players and said, gentlemen, we will chase perfection and we will chase it relentlessly, knowing all the while we can never attain it but along the way, we shall catch excellence. And catch excellence, Lombardi's Packers did. In Lombardi's second season, the Packers would reach their first NFL championship in 15 years. Even though they would lose to the Philadelphia Eagles that year, the appearance would kick off another era of dominance in Green Bay. Under Lombardi, the Packers would win five NFL championships, including the first two Super Bowls in NFL history. They would become the defining team of the 1960s with teams that are still held up as some of the best even earning Green Bay the nickname of Title Town. Soon after though, Vince Lombardi left Green Bay, having accomplished all he had sought out to do, and the Packers would once again slip into failing ways. From Vince Lombardi's departure until 1991, Packers fans were given little to cheer for. In 1991, after decades of irrelevance, the Packers executives decided to drastically change their strategy in hopes of turning the team around. New general manager Ron Wolf traded a first round pick for a highly touted but often injured quarterback from Kiln, Mississippi, named Brett Favre. Favre was thrust into the spotlight sooner than anticipated when starting quarterback Don Majkowski went down in the game against the Cincinnati Bengals. This would be another turning point for the Packers organization, as Brett Favre would develop into an all-time great quarterback, winning a Super Bowl in 1997 and multiple MVP awards. He would lead the Packers to multiple winning seasons until his departure in 2007. It seemed like once again, the team would be forced into another era of obscurity, but a new leader, a quarterback soon emerged. 2005 first round draft pick Aaron Rodgers surprised many with his quick development, and the Packers were not down for long. Under the leadership of Rodgers, they won a Super Bowl in the 2010-2011 season, 
and continue to be one of the best teams in the National Football League. Throughout the years, the Green Bay Packers have been established as one of the most successful teams in the NFL. From their humble beginnings to the expert leadership of Vince Lombardi into the Brett Favre and Rodgers eras, they have won the most total championships of any team and have the second most enshrined players in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Despite being the smallest market in American sports, they've become one of the most popular brands due to their rich and interesting history. After all, the most interesting and powerful stories often come from the most unexpected of places.